from HanselMinutes.com, it's Hansel Minutes, a weekly discussion with web developer and technologist Scott Hanselman, hosted by Carl Franklin. This is Lawrence Ryan announcing show number 77, recorded live Monday, August 13th, 2007. Support for Hansel Minutes is provided by Telerik, RAD Controls, the most comprehensive suite of components for Windows Forms and ASP.NET web applications. Online at www.telerik.com. And by .NET Developers Journal, the world's leading .NET developer magazine. Online at www.sys-con.com. In this episode, Scott and Carl talk about moving to a hosted email provider. Hi, this is Carl Franklin, and you're listening to Hansel Minutes from HanselMinutes.com. I'm here with Scott this week. Hi, Scott. Hey, how are you, sir? I'm fine. You enjoying your uh, hiatus before you jump ship over to uh, the motherland? Yeah, it's it's definitely weird. I don't like being idle. Yeah. It's supposed to be vacation, but I'm learning. I'm learning. Right. So this is going to be an interesting show. Well, it is because we were originally going to talk about debugging, and I think we'll still do one on debugging next week, but... I was. I sent you an email, and I'd asked you if you'd received it yet, uh, or you were searching. No, you were searching for an old email. It was an old email you wanted me to look for. Right. I wanted you to look for an old email because of a missing package that was sent. Right. And you said you couldn't do it because you hadn't been in the office in a while, and that's where your searchable archive was. Right. And, and you said you had some kind of a plan with a 16-gig flash drive? So, yeah. So, y- y- so here's my email system, right? I I have a mail server. And it's not Exchange. First of all, I don't do Active Directory. That's not my thing, you know. So setting up Exchange is probably not an option for me. And, it, you know, it's just a matter of pain in the ass factor. You know, I'm not an I'm not an IT guy. I don't have a whole lot of users. It's just me and a few people here. None of them have accounts on my machines. Everybody's like Internet accounts. It's all POP3. So I have uh, Alt-N's M. Damon. And they're... Um, uh, Outlook style web client is okay, but it's not great. And it has little bugs like when somebody sends you a invitation to a meeting, uh, it doesn't take into account time zones. So it'll say, you know, 9 a.m. Pacific time, you know, whatever it is, and it'll go in at the wrong time. It'll go in three hours uh, early or late or whatever. Why aren't you doing hosted exchange? You can buy an exchange server or, and have it handled for you entirely outsourced for 40, 50 bucks a month. Yeah, it's just something I don't don't want to deal with, right? I want to either con- I, I'm a control freak, right? I want things to run under my own domain. So hosted exchange can run under your own domain. You're right, that is an option, but it means giving up some a certain amount of control which I enjoy. So I know that if there's a problem with it, I can solve it. Is the control about holding on to your email, like having it in your control, like in a, in, a, in the sense of having the bits or the bytes available to you, or is it about your domain? Pretty much, that's it. I like to I like to know where my data is all the time, um, and I you know I just need to know that I have access to everything, and I don't I really dread the idea of getting on the phone with somebody at three in the morning so that I can get access to a file or something like that. I just don't you know that's the kind of stuff that I don't want to do. Okay. So I have I have Outlook. And uh, I, my main machine here at work, I used to have my main Outlook box be my laptop, but it proved to be too much of a pain to back up all the time. So I have a big RAID system here at work, and my Outlook PST file is on there. Okay. So um, when I need to search for old emails, uh, I need to be on my machine at work. Okay. So that's the story. So, so I, think, I think you're insane. Yes, I am insane. Yeah, that's, just, that's ridiculous. So I thought about getting um, a 16 gig flash card so I could carry my PST file around with me. So then I could use it on, you know, my laptop. I could use it at work. I could use it at home or whatever. And backing up should be a little bit easier. Huh. Okay. That's, so that, that's, that's just, what I thought. Okay. Until I spoke to you. Yeah. So I, I think that's just the craziest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> and I've heard a lot of crazy stuff. And I do a lot of crazy stuff too. I'm a total control freak. Right. Um, but I recently uh, moved my whole family over to Gmail, and I considered Windows Live uh, for domains. We'll talk about that, too. But at the end of June, I moved the entire Hanselman family on three continents and 11 family members 
over to Gmail, uh, which is basically moving them over to Google Apps. I didn't move them to the gmail.com domain. I actually signed up for Google Apps for Domains. Now, this is a service that Google offers? Right. It's at google.com slash a. And uh, basically, you set up your MX record, right, your mail transfer record for your DNS such that Gmail is in charge of it. Right. And then you set up what are called CNAME aliases, and that's like basically pointing a subdomain at at Google. Sure. This is all so, DNS stuff. M- right. Yeah. Very, very simple stuff that control panels now may have been difficult years ago where you'd have to actually edit a text file and, uh, you know, have Telnet access. But now with all of the different control panels that your ISPs provide you, it's a, a very simple operation. And Google's even made a... A real simple wizard that even, you know, my dad could go through where it's basically, what's your ISP? You know, click here. Here's a screencast to explain exactly how you need to log in and enter these values into these boxes. And they've got step by step for all the major ISPs. Yeah. So I pointed things like mail.hanselman.com, calendar.hanselman.com. I've even got docs, like documents. Hanselman.com. Okay. So my wife and I can share kind of Word and Excel like uh, applications that are all AJAX based. Okay. And I I imported all my Outlook email. I used a program called GMove. GMove from a company called Limit None. And and I I paid I think twenty five bucks or something for this program. And I moved two plus gigs of Outlook email over to this thing. Um, so you, you took an also, Outlook PST file and you uploaded it to Google? Well, it's pretty it's a pretty cheesy process right now, but yes, essentially I did. What what you do is Gmove hosts a intermediate format, I mean intermediate place. So basically, Gmove uses Ole automation to talk to Outlook, uses the Outlook automation interfaces. Okay. Takes all of your email on a folder by folder basis or by a date range. It's up to you. You can decide if you want to do it by folder uh, folder plus date range. I think I said all folders for the last two years or something like that. It sends it up to Gmove and holds it in a middle place and then makes a fake pop server and then basically Google sucks it in via pop. Oh. And it looks like the email came exactly as before. I mean, it, it, it doesn't, it doesn't look like it's coming from you. It looks like it came as it, as it came. No, pop three can do that. I mean, you just get the original emails. Right. Yeah. And G, and Gmove, even though they're sending it to themselves, they, they modify the headers such that it looks like it's a fresh import from pop. Okay. And then if you pay Google, Google has two different things. They have the free version, which is two gigs uh, per user and it's free. Uh, and then they have the $50 per user per year, which gives you 10 gigs, but it also gives you IMAP import support. So if you have an IMAP folder already or any email with a, with a public IMAP available uh, all account, right. it'll so, just suck all that over. So let's slow down a little bit. Basically, what you're saying is, um, all, now I have like 100 accounts at franklins.net, your family, friends, whatever. And right. I also have some other domains that I host here. So you're sure. saying I could keep all of those domains, the the the, the same names. No, huh? it's not going to be franklinsnet at gmail dot com. It's going to be franklins dot net, no. right? It'll absolutely be franklins net. So, for example, I've just logged into the dashboard for Google Maintenance. So I'm at the hanselman dot com Google dashboard, okay. and it says, you know, welcome Hanselman family. It says. All services are running smoothly. It actually says this. Daily active users, 11 active users in the last 90 days. I can click on the 11 users. It has an option where I can go and upload and provision all of my users. It also has a web service available such that I could provision my users remotely. So I could write an, I could write an administration application. Not so it sounds like it's got full features, but uh, last I knew Gmail was an invite only kind of thing. Is that still true? No, no, that's you can anyone can sign up for Gmail, but this isn't Gmail. This is Google Apps. G- okay. Gmail hasn't been invite only for many, many, many months. Really? Okay, shows what I. This know. is a totally separate universe. This is Google Apps, um, and you're getting something that looks like Gmail, behaves like Gmail, but the domain is yours. And I guess you know the thing that hits me all of a sudden is. Uh, you've, you know, when, when you want to search for emails, it's in one place and it's Google search. Right. Exactly. And one of the things that's nice about it is that there's even a mobile version. 
so I can log into my email on my Windows mobile device. And I get a tiny HTML version, and I can search all my email from there. Yeah, I mean, I can do that, too, with my web server. And, you know, it sounds like a lot of the same things that my mail server does. It just sounds like it, it does it better. What do you mean? How can you search all of your email? Well, if I kept all, if I moved all the email from my PST file onto my mail server, like back, okay, I could do the same thing, and I could just run the web via, client via which format? Via IMAP? I could do it with CSV, right? So I could I could export to CSV. I could upload and import into into my domains, and then I could have web access. But but the yeah, fact but is, that's is that just well, nuts, dude. Well, the fact is is that the client. The web client is just not that good. Yeah, you know? I mean, I'm really surprised that you would compare that kind of crazy hack to something like a complete provisioning system for user management. Uh, well, I, I take offense at that. It's not a crazy okay. hack. It's a it's a it's a mail server system that has a web interface. It's a fully it's in is fact it smarter it does, mail or do you know what the it, name of the interface in fact is? it does all of the things that you said so far and it does okay. them pretty well except that there's a few killer features that uh, that are deal uh-huh. breakers for me. Do you know what the name of the mail system is? Because there's a lot of the different things that are like yeah, it's M. Damon. Mail and it's like M. That. Damon from Alt N and M. Damon. Uh, M. D. A. E. M. O. N. Okay. And it's what I've been using for years and years and years. But another reason that I want to move away from it is because it's freaking expensive. It used oh, really? to be like you you pay like four ninety nine, you get the server, and then updates were free. And then they started mm-hmm. doing this. You know, you got to get upgrade protection. And oh wow! Otherwise, you can't get updates. And it's now, do not. They, up- do you use? Yeah. They are out. They have an Outlook connector. Do you use that one? Yeah, I I have used that, but. Um, I don't really need an Outlook connector. What I needed was to be able to just move things. Uh, I see. Yeah, once and then use. I'm the, looking at their site here, and if you have a hundred users, it's seven hundred and twenty dollars for their Outlook connector. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's pretty harsh. No, it is. It's and that's exactly what I'm saying. I want to move away from this and uh, into something else. But uh, and certainly, you know, the yeah. alternative is moving your PST file around on your. Uh, on a on a on a 16 gig stick, but you know that doesn't yeah. help the rest of my users. Well, one of the things that I like about the Google uh, Premier Edition, this is the f- the one that you actually pay you for, is that there's a 99.9% uptime guarantee. Yeah, no, well, so you, I would expect so that, no less. Right, so you get that Google level of up of uptime, and I've never had them been down in the last two months, so that's not a very lot of, a lot of data to to calculate, you know, as far as uptime, but. It's it's been very nice because there has not been a single problem, and uh, being able to go in and reset my user's password. I mean, it seems like these are small things. I mean, you can do these like you say with any commercially available email server. Yeah. But it's just so clean. It's just so simple. I can like right now I can see who's used a certain amount of space in their quota. I can up their quotas. I can change their, uh, you know, it's just it's, all these different things are very clean, very simple. I can create internal lists, and also we have the Google Calendar, so we can share our calendars. Now, if you have the nice. Premier Edition, right? Does right. that mean that everybody on your domain has to have the has to pay fifty dollars per user? Yeah, that, exactly. Okay. So if you have multiple domains, what I would do if you were switching over is I would decide which domain is the most important to you. There's two ways you can do this. You could just go free, right? All you all you lose with the free one is you get two gigs instead of ten. And there's no uptime guarantee, which means that if they were down, then they're down. Right. Okay. Uh, and then you could go bonkers. It could be totally free. But it's advertiser supported, right? So you still have the little ads on the side. Oh, I see. So you switch over to the Premier, you get the 10 gigs, you get the provisioning tools in the web service, and you get to remove the ads. But then you, you do have to pay $50 per user per year. So for us wow. with the family, it was nice and simple. They just pay me the fifty bucks. I send it off to Google, and everyone gets this benefit. We get shared family Google Chat. We get shared calendars. So from a family perspective, or a, or an organizational perspective, it's great. Um, a lot of universities are doing this. They've got a setup now where a university can basically outsource all their email to Google, which is nice for the kids now because it looks a lot more like the stuff that they're used to be using rather than like Elm or whatever the the university system is. And then the university could potentially use the free version 
and not pay anything. So they can save, you know, tens of thousands of dollars a year. But you can have multiple accounts, right? You have multiple domains. You don't have to sign all of them up if you don't want to. But at the same time, if some of your domains are aliases, you could go into, like right now I'm going into domain settings and I'm going under domain names. I have my primary domain and I have three domain aliases. So users can share the same mailbox with um, the, with different uh, addresses. So you could have Carl at Franklin's.net. You could have Carl at Pwop.com. They'd go to the same place. Okay. Now, you mentioned that WindowsLive.com also has a similar service. Right. So at Domains.Live.com, they've got the uh, the new Windows Live custom domains. So it's a real similar kind of a service. You get Windows Live Mail, which looks like Windows Hotmail. You can have an uh, basically an unlimited number of accounts. Uh, you get a hundred accounts initially, and then once you've proven that you kind of own the when you that you own the um, uh, the product and follow out, uh, you have to fill out a questionnaire. Then you can have an unlimited number of accounts. So you could have a hundred, two hundred, five hundred accounts, and then the accounts that you get on that particular custom domain also automatically become Windows Spaces, so they can have a blog. And they become messenger logins. So then they immediately become something that can be logged into messenger. So it's integrated with the whole kind of live family of services. Is it free? Yeah, it, it is, it is free. Uh, let me go ahead and just, uh, I'll, t- I'm going to click get started and I'm going to say, per- you can click get started and it says purchase a domain or use a domain you already own. I could say purchase a new domain. And they have a questionnaire where I can go in and say I want to go to register.com. Okay. And then they'll send me through this questionnaire and I could potentially uh, buy a domain right there on the spot. I'm going to go ahead and put in that I want to use Hanselman.com and see what the process where the process takes me. So here it says, well, do you want Hanselman. Scott at Hanselman.com to be the administrator? So it's basically saying, you know, do you have an existing live ID that you want to do administration of this particular site. It's a very, very clean kind of uh, familiar interface. It looks a lot like like Hotmail and like Windows Live, like the stuff that we're kind of used to seeing. Right. Uh, I'm going to say, go ahead and make Scott the administrator. And then it pops in and it says service configuration. It says, well, I need you to do this with your DNS. You can go in and click on membership accounts and uh, sign up. So uh, it looks like it's free. It looks like it's free for life, and um, I don't see anything anywhere about quotas, about disk space, or anything like that. Well, when it first came out last year, it was 250 megs, and, and I believe that when Windows Live Mail was released, it was upgraded to 2 gigs. Yeah, I think I saw something on Dig about, um, well, this was about backup, which I think like uh, both Google and Microsoft are now sort of battling for uh, online, offline backup strategies and they're offering a whole bunch of gigabytes for free. I think that was something different. Yeah, all of this is representative of moving your life into the cloud. Right. Right. I mean, think about what we would have felt five, ten years ago to to put all of my inbox and all of my calendar into a uh into a cloud system like this. Right. But we we built up trust, right? And when Hotmail runs for years without too many downs and uh Gmail runs for years. I mean, I think I've, I can count on one hand how many times I've hit google.com and had it been down. Yeah, I've never, you know, <laughs> never happened. I've had to like me. three or three or four times and I hit refresh and it's back. Right. You know, little hiccups. So though that, that trust is, you can't just say click a button here, move your life into the cloud. It took years of trust. For right. me, uh, you know, Google did what I wanted it to do. I like the, the Gmail interface and it was really easy to move the whole family over. And I was able to to let the family continue to have their their same email addresses. I went and uh, because they're my family, I went and asked them what their passwords were, and I set their passwords up so they were exactly the same, now, which made a lot of people more comfortable. Yeah. Now, what about if you don't like it? Can you move it back? What well, with with Windows Live, you can always turn around and move it back, right? You know, you, any change that you make to something like a DNS can always be be turned around, so you can switch back if you don't if you don't like it. Uh, although one of the things that's nice about, about Google domains that I haven't seen on the Windows Live custom domains is that they'll give you a temporary email address, uh, on Google without changing your, without changing your DNS. So for example, you sign up for Google Apps, you're not quite sure if you like it yet, 
What you can do is set a rule on your current email system that you want your email temporarily forwarded. Then they'll give you a funky email address, like if I was going to be scott at handsome.com, uh, they'll say like scott-handsome.com and then some guid at gmail.com. Basically, yeah. a throwaway address that no one would ever, ever see. You set up forwarding to go to that temporary place, and then that lets you see your email in two places. So it stays where it is, your existing system stays the way it is, and then you can also see it in Gmail. And if you like it, then switch over and then you're then you're set. But you've never made the the DNS change, so it doesn't matter. So I found the fact for Windows Live custom domains. Uh, if you go to domains.live.com and click on help, which is in the upper right-hand corner, uh, there's a fact, and it tells you with Windows Live custom domains you can use your own custom domain name to send and receive emails and instant messages, which we've been talking about. Uh, create up to 100 email accounts within your domain. So if you need more accounts, you can apply to receive unlimited number. So I suppose, I don't know what that application involves. There's a questionnaire that they ask you to fill out, and then once you fill out the questionnaire, you can get unlimited. Okay, and then receive two gigabytes of inbox storage space for each of your accounts with Windows Live Hotmail. Mm -hmm. Uh, Check your email from any web computer. Control junk email with uh, Microsoft Smart Screen technology. Receive email virus scanning and cleaning and interact. Yeah, right there. You just nailed two things that were huge for me. Now, junk email and virus scanning. This is yeah. a really important thing. My, uh, the, the folks that were handling my email previously charged like 10 bucks for virus scanning and then 10 bucks for, for, uh, spam. Yeah. And because my email address is so public, spam was becoming a huge problem for me. Right. And I was, I mean, I get, you know, literally a hundred to one, uh, spam, you know, uh, spam to legitimate email. Right. So I actually hired a company called Spam Soap, which is basically uh, dedicated to doing nothing but spam filtering for for email. And I was paying them $150 every three months. When I switched over to Google, or if you switch over to Live Domains, you get all of their spam filters and all of their virus scanning. And that's all built in. So for me, I actually saved money by switching over to a, a service that had much smarter spam. I've had about six false positives. Once I set those up in my whitelist, I don't think about spam anymore. And that has been a huge benefit. So wow. I think moving to a big system like a Microsoft or a Google would be a benefit for anyone who gets an oppressive amount of spam. Wow, this is this is this has been a, a definitely a life changing episode for me, Scott. Because uh, you know this this has been a problem constantly throughout my IT uh, career, if you if you want to say that. So I'm I'm going to do this. I'm really going to do it. Yes, you're really going to do this. So you need to you need to do this. You need to let's research them. Yeah, it's not let's, just the money; it's the hassle and the it accessibility. The hassle, yeah. You know. I would be really interested. Let's do some research offline and let's you and I sit down and think about which one's ready for you. You know, if you prefer Gmail, if you prefer I, Hotmail. I think I'm going to do live. I'm going to try live because you're doing Gmail. I'm doing live. It'd be nice to be able to compare notes and see what happens. Let's do that. And let's, uh, we'll get some of the, uh, the live custom domain guys to, uh, to maybe help walk you through it. Maybe just move one of your accounts that doesn't matter or do a temporary switch over. Well, I'm going to have to do it because my um, my mail server expires at the uh, probably in a in a few weeks. So I'm going to. So I'm the interesting have to do thing it. will be how hard you have how hard of a time you have transferring existing stuff. Right. Because really, for me, it wasn't useful until I got at least the last six months of email up there. Yeah. Yeah, that would be really interesting. I think that this is all representative of of us, of us moving our lives into the cloud. And not feeling so bad about it. Right. I mean, 99.9 uptime or, you know, you know, five nines even, these kinds of uptimes were just, un, you know, impossible to comprehend, uh, at least in the PC world and the web world. Certainly mainframes have this kind of uptime and a lot. But what I'm saying is that we're so used to our machines crashing. We're so used to having really lousy service from the various right. service providers, whether it be cable. I was looking at the Verizon Fios user agreement. You know, I signed up recently with Fios, which is the fiber optic internet service here in the US. Right. And it turns out that in the uh, small print, it says that there is absolutely no uptime guarantee. Hmm. I have no way to get any money back or any, any and anything. If they're down, they're down and there's nothing I can do about it. Think about it in terms of the uh, the airline industry, right? 
Yeah. They uh, how many times you've been kicked off a plane because they uh, they overbooked. Sure. If if Google or Microsoft did these things, if we if my Gmail suddenly said, "Oh, you know, sorry, out of space." Uh even though they had promised that I wouldn't be, that would be pretty uh pretty frustrating. Pretty but they've frustrating. gotten to the point where they can actually provide these services in a way that we can trust them. And and I don't feel bad about using these guys at Gmail because I'm still downloading these things into Outlook via Pop. Right. So I have a local archive. Right. Good. All right, Scott. That's the show. This is a good one. Uh, like I said, it's a life-changing one for me. I'm going to bite the bullet. And uh, we'll see you next week on Hansel Minutes. 